So I've been using a lot of birch bark because uh, it's damp, it's been damp lately and it's dead easy to get fire going with the birch bark. But today I've just bought a single cramp ball fungus or Doldinia concentrica as its Latin name is called. It's called that because of the concentric lines. If I just, what I tend to do is with all the uh, cramp balls that I use, I just shave off a little bit of the base of the uh, fungi here and that, you don't know if you can see that, but there's lots of lines around the, like a circle, almost like a tree. And that's the concentric lines, hence why it's called Doldinia concentrica. Also known as King Alfred's cakes because they look like the cake that King Alfred burnt when the Danes were invading England, which wasn't, I think, called England then. That's what Alfred of Wessex was fighting for it to be called. But you can see there, because I've shaved away that kind of outer layer bit, I've actually, these lighter brown parts here, these are the parts that will take a spark much easier because they're drier. There we go. They have quite a distinctive smell. They don't smell too good, but that will burn quite well now and smolder for a long time. So I added lots of oxygen to begin with and now I can just gently blow, taking care not to breathe in too much of the smoke. Okay, I'll let that smolder at which point I can get some dried tinder, which I'm going to use today is some bracken, dead bracken. Okay, got that ember going there. That's going absolutely fine. I've got some dried bracken here. Bracken generally takes a, takes a spark, an ember, quite well. Just make sure it's dry. All I'm going to do is curve it into a bird's nest shape and just with my thumb, just poke a hole in it there, literally like a bird's nest. And that hole, you can't really see it, but that hole is where I'm going to place this, the cramp ball. And then I'm just going to gently fold down the edges because these are the parts that are going to take. All it is now is just a case of blowing for a, as long as you can and keeping the, the oxygen level as accurate and as basically as, you've got to imagine it like blowing through a straw. You want to locate all that oxygen, keep it located directly on the fungus itself. It will smoke a lot. So as you had a breath, turn your head to the side to get some fresh air rather than smoke. And then breathe in. Getting smoky, just take my hat off. Get some other dry bracken, some sticks. Well, I'm looking forward to having some cooking here, but if Mike thinks I'm eating off the ash, no, I'm not some weirdo that doesn't like eating bacteria. Bacteria of certain sorts is good for you, but I'd like not to eat half the fire as well. So I've made him up this. It's a grill I've made out of some mesh. Of course, you need to reload the fire, but you're gonna be cooking over embers. But when you put it down, you've got to move it. Just get two sticks like that, one in each gap there. Bring them together by your hand, and I can lift that on and off the fire dead easy. It fits. It fits. Measured. That we're going to cook some burgers on I think. Now last time we came we did a night shot and I was helping Mike doing the filming with that 
and I just spotted this in dusk. Now, I've no idea what it is. Look, guys, I'm no bushcrafter. I've been out in the bush plenty of times, but I'm not what I call a bushcrafter. That, I assume, because it was rolled off a log, is the root system there. So what is that? I mean, I want to call it some sort of puffball. I reckon what? giant puffball. You reckon it's a like giant yeah. puffball? Is it one I can sort of burst, stamp on, or does it explode? I don't know. Some are edible. You guys, I'm not eating this one. I'll stick with, it. I'll stick with my grill. I'm not putting this on the grill. You guys out there, tell us what you think that one is. Getting some pine needle tea in there. Well, there we go. I've sorted out my uh, pine needle tea. I think Dad's going for traditional builder's tea, aren't you, Dad? Yeah, mine's going to have a tea bag in it. If I uh, going to have a, if I'm using the same can as you, the same Billy, it's going to have a bit of a taint to it. Yeah. Well, guys, I'm just here, basically updating my little log, log store here, because in the last video we did, uh, it looks slightly slanted, and I haven't actually finished it from my camp update videos. So I've just made a couple of stakes, which are going to have all the logs along here, tile it all off, and then the physics of it all, it all should still be supported on itself. Then, generally, when you're hitting stakes and stuff with an axe. I always put the sheath on, just in case the axe head flies off. At least it's just a little bit safer, although a pound head is still going to do some damage. You can chamfer off these edges or bevel them to stop the stick mushrooming, but I'm not too bothered because it's fairly hard wood, this. Well, I've got a couple of nice burgers there. It's dead easy to bring. You can bring them in a the container, or you can get them in a bit of uh, cooking foil. Let's pop those on there. And the other thing I've got, I've got a bit of bacon. I'm going to put those in some baps here. And if you do go, especially in the summer, which is rare in England, but we do get warm weather occasionally, just get the air out of them and seal them up. Otherwise, they go dry. You know, if, you, if you've got a long walk to your camp or you're out, a long day, they will dry out. And I've got some slices are going to have on top of that cheeseburger and then wow a bacon cheeseburger a bit of bacon as well sounds good obviously obviously the meat's going to take longer to cook than a bacon my tea i think let's take a check check that puppy out that looks like that is going to be boiling there yeah that's boiling so i can drop my tea bag in there and then these guys are going to start to cook, and then I'll put the bacon on there as well. Now, there's different areas. I feel this area is hotter. It's slightly hotter. I can just feel it with my hand. So it's up to you, you know, where you're going to actually do most of your cooking. I think back here. Wowee. No hair on that hand. Back this end, it's going to be the cooking spot. We'll give it a go. Look, it's all an experiment. I might actually cut that down and drop it down lower. It's all a tryout, but I've got to feel it's better than cooking straight on the ash. Now, when I've been fishing on long days, get yourself some little containers like this. You can get them in those sort of Poundland shops all over. The wife actually got these over in New York. I don't know what you guys in America call this. We call them Poundland. You guys must call them Dollarland. I don't know. But you can put the sugar, if you take sugar, and the tea bags in the same one. Put the sugar in the bottom, tea bags in the top. Then I can drop a tea bag in there. Everything's sealed. Everything's dry. And hopefully just pop that in there like that that's ready that can that can have about five minutes another thing is a tip with tea bags is well, listen we're english we know about tea give it at least five minutes it infuses i can't spell it but i can say it, it infuses all the flavors of the tea bag i was told if you do it in a minute or two dip the bag and throw it out you haven't got the full properties of that tea in there it won't taste the same give it a good five minutes and it must of course be boiling water Hey, we're English, we know about tea. Just lay that on there, because it normally doesn't take as long as the uh, burgers, as bigger meat, bigger steaks. Actually, you could drape this around the edge of that cage in thinking of it, so it'll burn the edges as well, you know, you can get that cooked. This is gonna be a jumbo. I'm <laughs> calling this guy <laughs> the totally awesome Bushcraft Burger. Well, these burgers are doing a treat because it's like a sort it's died down to like charcoal fires you know proper barbecue the smell here is unbelievable it is ridiculously good <laughs> i don't know how far it travels there's probably every predator known to man out here the few we have got in england but the bacon is on the go now the tea was unbelievable wasn't it mike so good yeah. it was so good we were just saying maybe it's because 
I left it right in while it was still boiling. Boiling, yeah. Rather than pour a boiling water into a teapot or a cup and it drops a few degrees and put the tea bag in, it went into the boiling water. And that's what I was told it has to be boiling water because it was an amazing cup of tea. Oh, juice coming out of that one. Let's get our cheese on. That won't take long to melt, I know. You can see, ouch, that's beautiful golden, cooked right through. Cheese is on, I've got the buns there, the baps, they're warming up as well. And to finish off, you can't go without this, look. A little container of ketchup. Well guys, while Dad's just putting the cheese on the burgers there, I just thought I'd tell you, show you a little thing that I made. Um, this is the small bowl that goes in the billy can that I've got, the 10 centimetre zebra billy. And uh, there's actually a video that I've made uh, on how to make this. It's basically a little DIY storage container. I think the video is called DIY Survival Storage Container or something uh, from Bottle Caps. Uh, I'll pop a link into the video description so you guys can see it. But all it is is two bottle caps from a Coca-Cola bottle with a piece of basically plastic or card dividing the two caps underneath. On one side I have pepper and this is all sealed shut so it's kind of you know this is bottle caps are designed to keep the water or the liquid in the bottle so it's all completely sealed and waterproof and the other side I have the salt I'm going to put some pepper on my burger I don't want to put too much pepper on just hold my finger there do you want a bit? Yeah, yeah I'll go for it why not why not indeed it yeah. is a bushcraft burger this anything awesome. goes on look at that oh, I can smell that pepper yeah what you know little grains that went yeah. on the fire awesome Right guys, ketchup's on. Got to move quickly now like all chef people do. Rolls are nice and warm. Bacon on. Two bits of bacon each. That is... That looks awesome. A big old burger. I've got it upside down there, haven't I? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, it's going to get eaten. I've got to turn it up that way. There's the lid. Sold. That one's... It's so hot, these embers. It's I'm really pleased with this grill thing. This very was good. an absolute dream. Very good. Two burgers, big size. Oh, this looks good. This looks good. Guys, this must be better than eating half the ash in the fire. Trust I, me. I still like chargill stuff, but... Yeah. Mmm. Ha! Whoa! <laughs> That's not bad, is that it? That is unbelievable. <laughs> that is incredible. That is really tasty. We said it about the tea in the last shot we were talking about it. I wonder if it is the fact that it's proper open fire. Yeah. Because look, I can only speak for here. In the modern society, we have gas, we have electric, we have microwaves. Yes, it cooks stuff. It, it's not tasting, is it? Our food doesn't taste the same as this. Maybe it's the smoke as well. Mm. It's that natural ash smoke, wood smoke. And of course, the English tea. Mm. Do any of you guys out there have a special recipe for a bushcraft burger? We're, yep. talking, we're talking outdoor bushcraft camping, guys. We know, we know you Americans and Canadians have got some of the best meat ever. We Aww. know that when we go over Florida, travelling around, we've done a lot of travelling around America. It puts our meat to shame. Guys, that food was spot on. We're going to be, let the fire burn down. But first, listen, we keep getting emails, don't we, from people who are yeah. really interested in the bushcraft show that Mike's doing. It's Mike's show, you know. Not mine, I'm just turning up to eat the food. <laughs> but... We got one from a friend I had down fishing who I haven't seen for like 14 years. His name's Jerry, he's uh, England, he's up at York, and just out of the blue he was in my garage when we finished fishing, and I said, I've got a load of old knives, he said, I said, oh, I'll dump them. And he said, no, no, I'll take them away and I'll make something. And he sent me this, you'll probably be able to just about see that there. It's just literally a kitchen knife, but he's made like a sort of bone handle to it, and he's also handmade the sheath there with all the eyelets that you can put it into. And he's given me, because I know like a leather strop is what's used for sort of finally- Honing the edge, yeah. Finally cutting the edge off it all, putting a really, really sharp edge on it. So it's literally, he's made that a piece of belt. I hope it's not his belt and his, and his pants fall down, but there it is, so that you can always sharpen it on sight. And he's got this toggle bit, but I don't know what that is, Mike. What's that? I'd say that's to put it onto your belt. It's like a loop. You put it through the loop of your belt, of your so uh, trousers. Through your hip? Yeah. I yeah. got you. Okay. So see what he says about so it. He's, he's going to read it to you guys, because yeah. I know other guys say, well, we want to send you stuff and that. But Jerry, man, he obviously knows where we are. He sent it in. He says, uh, firstly, it has a sushi slash chisel knife grind. 
That is a 20 or so degree grind on one side and a zero slash flat grind on the other like a chisel. This makes for a very sharp edge which is easily maintained by stropping, hence the bit of leather attached to the sheath and the little pop stropping compound in the bag with the stones which we didn't bring with we us. We didn't bring that with us, yeah. You only need a very small dab to keep it loaded. When stropping, hold the flat side flush against the strop and the other about 20 degrees, 10 to 20 strokes each side should keep it scary sharp. Secondly, the sheath has been treated with walnut oil and beeswax to preserve and make it water resistant. This made it a little soft until the oil and wax set. When taking the knife out of the sheath, push down from the top and slide the sheath, slide off the sheath. I've sprinkled some talc inside to make this easier. The toggle is in place of a loop and can be used to attach the sheath to the belt, oh. shirt or whatever. 